One fourth of humanity must be eliminated from the social body. We are in charge of God's selection process for planet Earth. He selects, we destroy. We are the riders of the pale horse, death. Now, she is absolutely right, but when you say we, when she say we, you got to understand what is being said. Now, when you go into uh, King David's writings, the Most High spoke through him and prophesied about what he was going to do to uh, these individuals that was coming against his people. And so, uh, let's go to that Psalms. Psalms. Uh, let's see. Psalms 64. Uh, let's see, seven, no, yeah, let's get five and then seven and eight, it say they encourage themselves in an evil manner, they consume, con commune of lying snares privately, they say who shall see them, uh, verse seven, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow, suddenly shall they be wounded, uh, so they shall make their own tongue fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. Okay. They pretty much making these plans behind the scenes and the Lord is going to make them tell on themselves. And this is one of the examples of this lady telling on themselves. Now let's get to this pale horse situation. Um, and I said, we are the riders of the pale horse death. Now, when you understand what the Bible was talking about, it was being specific, just like she is being. She's claiming that we, meaning her nation, see, because she ran for uh, vice president in 1984. So she understands who is, is doing the ruling of the world. She understands that America has an empire. See, that's why they own 800 of the 840 military bases is owned by America. You see, and these other military bases is not even in comparison. See, that's almost 100% of military bases owned by the American society. Now, when you go into the word pale, let's go into the etymology of this word pale. Okay. It says pale of human skin or complexion. See, this is not a color. This thing is about skin. See, and a horse does not have uh, his skin does not show majority of the time. And if it do show, it's probably a dark complexion. You see, this is of human skin. Now, there's only two types of human skin when you look into the, um, the anim uh, anatomy books and the uh, micro, uh, microbiology books. When, when, when you look up skin in the uh, college education, it clearly tells you that it's only two. And one skin is pale and the other one has metalin uh, and pigment to it. One skin does not have pigment. Now look at what it says uh, in modern French. It, it was... Uh, meant colorless. See, they would call the people with pigment colored people and the pale people, they was calling them whitish. That's why it says uh, of a whitish appearance. 
and mainly because when they don't have uh, their skin, I mean their blood showing, then they would call themselves pale. But it's meant to be directed towards skin. And so the pale horse is people with, with, with skin that's uh, pretty much colorless. That's what this thing is all about. And it identified who the, the red horse was also. So let's go into Revelation. Revelation chapter 6, verse 4. Now let's go to verse 2 and look at, it's not talking about white. See, white stands for pure righteousness, and this is talking about uh, Yahweh Shah, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior for the nation of Israel. His kingdom was categorized as a pure kingdom, see, a righteous kingdom. That's why they falsely call themselves white people, because they want to be known as righteous and clean and pure. But actually, they go to verse 4. That's who the nation, the embodiment of the nation. Verse 4 says that they went out another horse that was red. And red stands for the nation of Edom. Edom means red. Let's go ahead and get that. Because I'll be saying that a lot. And we want to get that. The meaning of Edom. It says, the Hebrew word Edom means red. The Hebrew word Edom means red. That's all we want to get out of that. It means red. So when you go back to Revelation 6 and 4, this is what verse 4 is talking about. And there went out another horse or power or kingdom because the white horse is about the kingdom. Yahweh shot in his kingdom. That's why it says in verse 2. And a crown was given unto him. See? But notice what uh we gonna we're gonna notice how they word this, and then when we get to verse uh, eight with the pale horse, notice how they word that one. Now it kept verse two, it kept the white horse, it talks about him. It kept it in a singular uh, one person situation but look at verse 4 what it how it worded after it said the horse was ready so the power was given unto him that said they're wrong to take peace from the earth but look at here it says and they so this was not just one uh, kingdom or uh, one person uh, that represented the kingdom like Esau it was they shall kill one another, should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So, who was given a sword? Let's go ahead and get that real quick. Now, Genesis 27 and 40 it say, And by thy sword thou shalt live, and serve thy, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. The dominion is the rulership. That's why they have power to take peace from the earth. And they was given a great sword because the blessing for them was they was going to uh, live by the sword. By thy sword shall thy live. Okay, and this, the, this Isaac telling Esau this. So when you go back to Revelation 6 and 4, you can see why well, this horse or this kingdom, this power, that was red, they was killing one another, World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Civil War, it said, and there was given unto him a great sword. Now let's get the fell horse. 
Now it says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. Now, the, the power was already given to the red horse to take peace from the earth and to kill one another. But let's see who else who was this. Was Edom ever called death? Was Edom ever called death? Look who Habakkuk is written to. Teman. Teman is to the nation, is about the nation of Edom. So let's go here and now we know who the, the book is the, talking about. Look at verse 5 of Habakkuk 2. Ye also, be, because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man, neither keep it at home, who enlarge his desire as hell and is as death. See? Is as death. So when you go back to 6 and 8, it says that uh, his name and uh, and his name that sat on him was death. See, is as death. And hell followed him. See, his desire is as hell. And the power was given unto him. No, the power was given unto them. See, this is a plural situation. And this pale horse is talking about a nation with pale skin. With their skin has gone pale. See, a nation that's got a skin complexion that don't have any color. See, because this horse represents a nation. It says, uh, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. The fourth part of the earth is America. Uh, it says, to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with beasts of the earth. Now let's go back up this horse situation. What is this horse representing? Uh, let's get 11, 19 and 11. And it says, it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. See, Yahweh is on a white horse. Because that represents his kingdom. Okay, let's see what else we can get with this horse. Um, let's see. This horse represents kingdom. Now Habakkuk talks about horses. Not only that, uh, chariots and horses represented gods in the ancient ancient world. Uh, let's see. Let's plug in horse. Let's go ahead and do that while we got time. I'm going to have to go back a couple of times. Let's plug in horse. to the prof prophetic scriptures with a, um, the uh, prophets spoke in similar to see because the horse uh, they spoke in similar to Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah Well, 
I think that's the best example I'm going to be able to find with that horse situation. Okay, now we got an example. The beast, it says, and I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. This beast represents power and government. Let's see, oh, 17, let's get that. 17 and 12. It says, in the ten horns which thou saw ten kings, which have received no kingdom but yet, but received power as king one hour with the beast. So this beast is compatible with a, um, with a kingdom or a government. Let's go back to six and eight. I mean six. It says, first verse one of the four beasts see these horses was beasts and that fourth beast which was the pale horse let's get that the fourth beast is in Daniel 7 let's see the fourth fourth beast is in Daniel look there goes verse 7 it says and these great beasts, which are four, are four kings. See, the beast is a king. And look at 19 and say, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. See, that fourth beast, that pale horse, was a nation uh, that had pale skin. And they was the nation of Edom uh, that was represented by the horse that was red. So this kingdom, this fourth kingdom was red. It was given a great sword. It was uh, given power to take peace from the earth and kill one another. It was a pale horse that represented death and hell. Uh, it was given power to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. It was given power over the other beasts other governments of the earth. You see, this all represents the nation of Edom, the so-called white man, who is uh, in his the rulership of the of Esau, Esau's blessing. So that's who the pale horse is, and she's totally right. They are the pale horse. That's their nation. And I'm gonna leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Hashem Yahushua, Hashem Kakidash. Double honors to the elder, pushing the truth, peace to the elect worldwide. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.